Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, apps for working with English language learners. Hi, my name is Guy Train and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge and today I'd like to talk about some apps of, for working with English language learners. A few months ago we had our first edition of talking about students um, who are learning English and this has been one of our most popular shows and we wanted to follow up on that and add some apps that can be used to help students who are learning English in our classrooms but also students who are learning other languages or we have sometimes in our classroom students who are first language English and we want them to learn some other languages. So let's jump right into it. One of my favorite apps, and it's an app that's received multiple rewards, is Duolingo. And Duolingo is an app that allows you to learn from language to language. It's got many layers to it and it is game-based. So it allows students to practice every day, adults too by the way, uh, practice every day learning the language they want to learn. But one of the things we want to talk about is learning English and in this case I'm going to use the example from Spanish but it can be done as you can see here from multiple languages. So this is English from Spanish and the language you're coming from is important because the program actually looks at what we're gaining here. And you can see that you can set it at different levels. You can do just five minutes pra of practice a day 10, 15, and 25 minutes. The normal is 10 minutes and that'll be good enough for us right now. So now we are going to start at the beginning. There's also an option of taking a short test to determine what level you should start with. But this is starting, you can see, with vocabulary and very, very, very basic vocabulary. And you can see that there's a mix of items. So this one gives it in Spanish and asks you, what does it mean in English? Man. And, Man. and you can see that if I press something else, I get the words and if I choose correctly or incorrectly I get one point off and I continue and this is Nina. Let's see what happens when I get it correctly. You can see the bar that advances right up here and this can continue. And so now you have to translate that back into Spanish. So this obviously will work for students who have some knowledge of the language, especially the written language, and have come to the US as uh, readers and writers, at least to a certain degree, and that allows them to acquire the new language quickly based on their knowledge of the old language. But what I love about this is it has an audio feedback, it has a written feedback, it has pictures, and it also can record your voice. Multiple ways to do the work on Duolingo. And what's great about this is your students who are actually uh, English speakers can learn to to speak Spanish if that's the uh, extra language in their classroom and that way they can converse with newcomers who speak Spanish much better. So you can bring your Spanish speaking students to speak English and your English speaking students to speak Spanish and really create a bilingual classroom. So that's Duolingo. Uh, I want to uh, talk about two apps that do something similar and that is have bilingual stories, stories that are uh, in English and Spanish so kids can transfer between languages, it helps them translate, it helps them get the hang of both languages and they're transferring the knowledge. So this one from Clever Kids is called Brainy Fables and it's got an English version and a Spanish version and they're read to you. The day that Marcelo Fox didn't get a dance, written by Franco Soldi and illustrated by Pedro Vascon. So you can see that we can start the story and it'll start long, in English. Time ago, but if we click here, living on Earth, and there was only hace mucho, mucho tiempo, las personas no habitaban la Tierra y solo existía el gran reino de los animales. En este reino fértil y próspero, so, this story 
this story is in both languages and kids can listen to each page in both languages, easily transferring between languages. It's a very attractive tale, the graphics are very nice, and it's one way to get kids to maintain home language. If it's Spanish, there are uh, the same kind of apps for other languages as well, Chinese, uh, Russian, and others. So that's one way to do that. And this is just one story, but it is a very nice story. It is uh, fairly complex and it is very engaging. Uh, you could hear the music and other things that are there. This is a much more basic uh, app. This is called eGlobal Reader and what it has is again stories in English and in this case Spanish, but here the sentences are much more basic and they're really designed to teach basic words and again it doesn't matter if you come from English and learning Spanish or come from Spanish and learning English and you can see for example foods you can listen to it in English food and then to make sure you understand or to learn the new word you can listen to it in Spanish And so you can see that you immediately get the interaction between the languages. You get the sentence in one language, then the next, allowing kids to make connections and learn the new language while maintaining their capacity and practicing in their original language. What I love about this, again, is that we have that sentence written out. We can listen to it just by pressing on the button. And you can see a picture that helps you understand what we're talking about in the sentence. So all of these connections tie together to effective language learning. So this one is called eGlobal Reader and you can see that this is just the level one stories and you can have things like senses, food, and then stories that have more content to them like the nine uh, dragon suns. And you can see that the navigation is very very simple and it allows to focus on this basic layer of language that provides basic nouns, basic verbs, and the connection to the real world. So this is eGlobal Reader and it's a great app. The last app that I want to mention in working with English language learners is Google Translate. And what I love about Google Translate is that you can actually type or paste text or even record. So you can speak and then you get the translation in the other language. Um, if that language has uh, audio, in this case it's Hebrew, my home language, it does not have uh, audio, but if this was Spanish, this would have audio and you could play it. So it's a way to communicate, it's also a way for speakers of other languages to be able to translate what they mean early on when they don't have enough words in English, they can say it clearly in Spanish and then it'll translate back. So Google Translate is great and what I love about Google Translate is like all other Google apps, it exists on the iPad, it exists on the iPhone, it will also exist on any laptop, Chromebook, or anything else that is running Chrome, you can bring up the Google Translate app either as a separate app or as part of your browser and immediately start the translating uh, going on and the audio features make it even stronger. So this is Google Translate and it's another great tool to help students if they speak another language be able to translate, be able to work across languages and get some help especially if there's a vocabulary word they don't know but they know in their home language. It's one of those opportunities. So today I've talked about a few apps that can really help working with English language learners. We talked about Duolingo that can teach English or Spanish or actually over 20 lang different languages in a game-based environment that allows a lot of practice, a lot of feedback on performance and uses your first language knowledge to teach you the second language. I talked about Translate, Google Translate that allows you to move between languages fairly easily and allows you to merge and play between them and I talked about two apps that have bilingual books that allow kids to read in one language and then hear it in the other language 
and be able to move back and forth. All of these apps, and that's a great thing, all of these apps allow students who are learning English to come into our classrooms and know better English, but it also allows our English-speaking students to learn new languages. So that's it for this time, and I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.